What is an assurance game in game theory? And this is oftentimes called the stag hunt game. The way I like to think of this is um, team versus individual because that goes over well with students. Um, students know that if you work in, on a team, you can accomplish more, but you have to trust that your teammates are actually going to follow through with their end of the bargain. Um, whereas if you work individually, you can produce less, but it's less risky. And that's the basic idea with uh, assurance games and stag hunt. So the reason it's called stag hunt is um, if you hunt with a team, you can get a bigger animal. You can get a stag. Whereas if you hunt by yourself, you get a rabbit, and so you don't have to worry about your teammates living up to their end of the bargain. And you can solve for Nash equilibria. And when you do, you will find that there are two Nash equilibria, where one of these Nash equilibria is actually way better than the other, so it should be obvious which one you should go with. Like, everybody should recognize we prefer this Nash equilibria over that one. But the problem is, if you don't trust the other party to go with that, you're better off going with the individual, because at least if you go individual, you will get one no matter what. You won't risk getting zero. You won't risk going hungry if we're talking about the stag or the rabbit. And so it's really about trust. It's about assurance that the two parties assure each other, yes, we will follow through with our end of the deal. And that might seem obvious, but what if you imagine, wait a second, okay, here we have zero if um, you choose to do the teamwork and the, the other party chooses to do individual work. But what if we changed these two numbers, these off equilibrium numbers, to negative 100? We have not changed the equilibrium by doing that. Nash equilibria is still team team and individual individual, but it sort of raises the stakes of the need for assurance where um, both players can say, I will definitely do the teamwork, you can definitely count on me, but if they don't trust each other, they're really afraid of ending up with this negative 100, they may decide, you know what, I'm actually just going to go for the one for sure, rather than risking the other party not following through on their end of the bargain. So at the moment, I'm going through a series where I'm setting up these classic games and writing out their traits. So let me just write out the classic traits of Stag Hunt. Okay, three traits here. There's two Nash Equilibria in a stag hunt game. One of the Nash Equilibria is better for both players. They can both look at those two and they can both say, this is the one I personally would prefer. However, what adds the complication is the fact that the worse of the two Nash Equilibrium for both players is associated with more risk if you're not sure the other player will actually follow through with the teamwork. And so if you end up in this box, this is definitely worse. And because of that, if risk is something that enters people's minds, or if people aren't really certain about the other player's understanding of game theory, or their other player's actual payoffs, then you're more likely to end up down here. And of course, why are we learning these games? Like, I, there's actually a lot of reasons to learn these games. One of the reasons is to recognize these scenarios in the real world. And in this case, what you might recognize in the real world is a group of people who would very much benefit from cooperating. But you're looking at them and they're not cooperating. And you're like, why not? Why aren't you guys cooperating? And it's really a matter of trust and assurance. They're not cooperating, not because the incentives aren't there, but because they don't trust. And so that's one of the reasons we're learning this. And also, oftentimes economists, we're trying to rejigger incentives. So we might look at this scenario and say, wait a second, people aren't trusting each other. They're really worried about the negative 100. So how do we change the incentives in this game to increase the probability of cooperation? And in this particular case, it could be that actually this is the off equilibrium thing that everybody's worried about and not trusting each other over. So if we can actually change that to maybe, maybe we change it to one.
Suddenly we do that and there's no more risk involved. Suddenly there's a much stronger incentive to work as a team. And even if we change that to a zero, um, that would still increase the odds that people would cooperate over and above if it were a negative 100. So we're really setting up these games to try to figure out how do we get people to cooperate. And with a lot of these classic games, including Prisoner's Dilemma, Game of Chicken, Battle of the Sexes, it has to do with cooperation. Economists tend to define those strategies as cooperate and defect. And I think it's pretty obvious here which of the strategies would be the cooperate strategy and which would be the defect strategy if you're trying to map this onto a real world scenario.